Here we're going to look at the chemistry of ASR chlorides. ASR chlorides have got the following general structure. Where we've got a chlorine atom bonded to a carbonyl carbon. Because oxygen and chlorine are more electronegative than this carbon, they will pull electron density away from the carbon and it will leave this carbon with a large delta plus, which means it's readily attacked by nucleophiles and in fact makes ASR chloride the most reactive of all the carbonyl groups we've studied in this topic. An example of an ASR chloride would be ethanoal chloride. So it's ethanoal because I've got two of my longest chain. So oil chloride is my suffix for these ASR chlorides. Let's have a look at the reaction that they undergo. The general reaction is as follows. They react with nucleophiles, and I'm going to just call this nucleophile NU. H. And what happens is, in this reaction, this NU part of the nucleophile is going to swap places with this chlorine. And it will give you the following. And you're always going to get HCl as your secondary product. So you can see that is my reaction where I've got my this is called my ASR group, and that's going to join on with the NU. So we can hopefully see there, that is my general reaction. The mechanism is called a nucleophilic addition elimination and is one that you definitely need to be able to remember and it goes like this so I've got my lone pair on my nucleophile, put them a little bit close together, and this lone pair is going to be attracted to the delta positive carbon. So the base of the arrow from the lone pair to this delta positive carbon that forms a new carbon nucleophile bond. In the process of that bond forming, we get this carbon oxygen bond breaking and that's like my addition part of the mechanism it's addition because you'll see we're going from double bonds to single bonds in the intermediate so it's important to remember the charges we've got a negative on the oxygen and this nu atom is going to have a positive The elimination step, the carbon oxygen double bond will reform. This carbon chlorine bond breaks and this hydrogen nucleophile bond breaks. Remember that when we break bonds heterolytically, the most electronegative atom will gain the electron. So in this case, when this bond breaks, the chlorine is more electronegative, so the chlorine gains the electrons. When this bond breaks, it's the nucleophile atom here, which is more electronegative. So please make sure your arrow goes towards the nucleophile. It does not go that way. That will produce a H minus sign, which would be wrong. And that will form my final product.
So that's my mechanism. That's my nucleophilic addition. And just say this is my elimination part of the mechanism. That's my nucleophilic addition elimination mechanism. I'll say it again. It's addition because you're going from double bonds to single. Elimination then because you're going from single bonds back to double. So remember in addition reaction, you're going from double bonds to single bonds. Elimination reaction, you're going from single bonds to double bonds. And because that's got both, it's an addition elimination. Let's have a look and see what specific nucleophiles I will be using in this reaction. Four different nucleophiles. There is water. Now the nucleophile I was saying was NUH. And in water's case, the NU is the OH. And I've got my hydrogen there. I've got ammonia, which is NH3. Which is as follows, I've got an alcohol and a primary amine. So in this case, I'll just highlight it, my NU is here and then my hydrogens are there. So let's have a look at the reactions in more detail. First one is where water is my nucleophile and I'm going to use ethanoyl chloride as my example in each case. So I've got CH3, CO, Cl, which is my acyl chloride, and then I react that with water. Now, just to say that this reaction doesn't need any catalyst because the reaction is fast enough because of how much of a delta positive this carbon R carbon has got. So we do not need any sort of catalyst. This reaction occurs readily. Now, if we have a look at my general reaction here, you should be able to figure out what product I get. Because in this case, NU is equal to OH, then this will be an OH group. So RCO, OH, that will give rise to a carboxylic acid. And I get HCl as well. The mechanism, let's just have a quick look at the mechanism. So this mechanism is one that you absolutely need to remember. So don't forget your charges and your lone pair. Reform the carbon oxygen double bond, kick out the Cl, and remember the bond goes towards the oxygen or the nitrogen, the atom with a positive charge. And that gives me my product. Plus HCl. So first one, the reaction with water will produce a carboxylic acid, and there you've got the mechanism. Now, to show you how easy this is, or how easy it is to remember, reaction two is a reaction with an alcohol. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to modify it very, very slightly. So I'm going to say methanol. And all we do is, is I'm going to change this to methanol. Now, before I show you what the product is, I'm going to do the mechanism first. All that happens is, is that this 
H group is replaced by a CH3. That is now methanol. So all we're doing is I'm going to replace that with a CH3. So now this is replaced by a CH3. And we can see that my product formed is an ester. It's methyl ethanoate. So that's reaction two. As you can see, I'm not writing the mechanism out again. I'm just adapting it a little bit to um, show you that, that, that it's just the same. It's just a slight difference in the structure of the nucleophile. The third reaction that we need to be aware of is that of ammonia. And ammonia is NH3. So what I need to do now is I need to change this part of the nucleophile. Remember the hydrogen is, is fixed, it's the same for all. But now I've got an N here and that again is the first step again all I'm going to change here is my this now is an N and therefore this is now going to be if we look at the mechanism all I've done there is I've kicked out this hydrogen so now this is going to be NH2. And we form here an amide. And this molecule is called ethanamide. Again, why is it ethanamide? Well, we've got two carbons in my longest chain, and it's this part of the functional group, which is an amide. A C double bond O N is an amide. So that's the reaction there with ammonia. We're now going to look at primary amines, and a primary amine I'm going to use as in my example, I'm going to use methyl amine. Now, all the primary amine is, is basically a, a, the CH3 is going to replace a hydrogen in ammonia. So we've got as my reactant CH3 NH2. So all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to get rid of one of these hydrogens and put CH3 in its place. So that there is my CH3 NH2. But the mechanism is the same. Again, what I need to do is modify this. And therefore, I'll modify my product. So you can see there that HCl is formed as a product in every case. Now, this means that this is now my product. Now, this molecule, again, is an amide, and it will be an amide as long as it contains this. C double bond O N. But this is what we call an N substituted amide. What we do is we name this in two parts. So we have a look at what R group is attached to this N, and we see it's a methyl. And because the methyl is attached to an N, the first part of this name is going to be N methyl. And that's due to having this methyl group here attached to the nitrogen. We then look at the part of the molecule here. How many carbons have we got there? We've got two. So that becomes N-methyl and it's 
an amide, so it's N-methyl ethan amide. So that's an n substitute amide called N-methyl ethanamide. And historically, this has been something that students have found hard naming these n substituted amides. So I'm going to go through another couple of examples of how to name these. So let's just imagine now I've got the following molecule. Now, this molecule will be formed by the reaction of um, butan-1-amine and propanoal chloride. So what, again, we've got to look at is what's attached to my, to my nitrogen. Well, I've got one, two, three, four. So this one will become N-butyl because I've got a butyl functional group here attached to my nitrogen. And then I think, right, well, how many carbons have I got in this part of my molecule? It's three, so that becomes propan amide. So it's N-butyl propanamide. Let's have a look at one more example. I'm hoping by now that you can figure out the name of this. Again, first thing we do is what is attached to my nitrogen? Well, I've got, uh, my R group's got two carbons. So this now becomes N-ethyl. The next part of the name is how many carbons have I got attached here? I've got four. So this is butan amide. So that's how you'd name these, what we call these N-substituted amides. So you can have a look there at the overview of what we've done. We've looked at explaining why acyl chlorides are very reactive. We've looked at how we name them. We've looked at the general reaction, and I'm hoping the colour coding there has helped you see where the atoms are going in the reaction. We've looked at the mechanism. It's a nucleophilic addition elimination addition in the first part because we're going from double bonds to single. Elimination in the second part of the mechanism because we're going from single back to double. This mechanism you need to remember for the four different nucleophiles and we need to know what products formed when these nucleophiles react with an acyl chloride. And the last little bit we looked at there was how we name these N substitute amides. And that there is acyl chlorides.